Hello, this is a living room where we make requests happen. And this is a request that's a birthday present to me from my cousin Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. And her stipulation was it's to be my choice. Hmm. And I have chosen Constant Lambert's 1926 setting of Li Po translated poem from translated from Chinese called Lines. Tell you more about it after. Yeah, very interesting stuff. But Not it's... written for the guitar. He's transcribing it. Thank you, Suzanne. I've always wanted to do that. But there you go. Believe it or not. So this copy is printed on, first of all, North American. Yeah, slightly different. Uh, eight and a half by 11. Um, and it's uh, also... You can, get a bit, 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 you can get a bit bigger notes, can't you? Yeah, well, I don't know. It's just all that was available when you photocopied something from a library. And um, it uh, it also also is, is front and back uh, using one sheet of paper because I knew that I wanted to go to England. And you want to take a few sheets of paper exactly, as Exactly, well. I didn't want to, yeah, I wanted to max out what the music I brought without So those who have been watching for a while know how long Patricia's lived in the UK. So that's a while of never, ever, ever doing it. And I've always wanted to. I love this poem. I love the cycle. I love mm -hmm. Constant Lambert is, a, is an underrated composer, underperformed. This was composed in 1926 in October when apparently, and I looked it up because the internet's a wonderful thing, it was snowing in London in, in, in October 1926 when he wrote this, you can feel it. Um, wow, that's interesting. That I didn't know when I originally found this. Um, and also it, it, oh my goodness, it's just, Lipo, we were looking this up, he had a major sort of 1920s, even though he himself was from the Tang Dynasty, the, the words written by Li Po are... I mean, they're more Levi. than a thousand years old at that point. Yeah. And yeah, but after all that florid Victorian... I think, you, I think that's what poem, it is. ...poetry, the, the spareness of it was considered quite modern, and he had a lot of major fans and, and new translations. And Also, Constant Lambert was obsessed, unhealthily obsessed, with the actress Anna Mae Wong. And, of course, who wouldn't be? Um, and she was she completely had absolutely no feelings for him whatsoever. She was either oblivious or just 
not interested in this this English composer <laughs> Crazy. or his obsession. And he ended up marrying a lady who kind of looked like her, but was definitely not her. And actually whom I saw recently at the exhibition of Madame Yvonne's paintings. And if it's before October the 15th, you're watching this and you're in London, do go and see the exhibition of Madame Yvonne's portraits. Where she because does... she was featured. This, yeah, his yeah. The, his, his, Constant Lambert, the woman he did eventually marry because he couldn't marry Anna Mae Wong. And as Anna Mae Wong, he was so obsessed with Anna Mae Wong, he dedicated these settings of Li Po to her. These are dedicated to her. So, so was the lady that he married actually from Asian descent or East Asian no, descent? Partially, partially, I believe so. But she definitely looked. I mean, there were, according to the internet, no, but I mean, it's known that there were increasing number of uh, people from China and East Asia in London, particularly after the First World War, of course. Um, but mm. whether or not that was a factor, I don't, I don't know. Very might have. Was he been... hanging out in Limehouse? Where well, did he live? You were talking. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good... which I don't know the answer to, but um, maybe there's a blue plaque somewhere. But um, you, you were talking about the sort of Orientalism trend in in. Yeah, you can hear a lot in the music, but everything's all cultural. Um... Fashion, cultural movements of anything tend to be a combination of factors as what's mm. sort of around in the air, but also, like you just said a minute ago, a reaction to things before. Yeah. So to take ancient yeah. Chinese poetry is a, is a reaction to certain things, you know, following the death of Queen Victoria and the Edward, Edwardian era. Um, so you can see how that sort of came around in Britain. Do you think this sort of song could have been written in the USA at that time? Possibly. I don't know. It's I... got a certain English character to it, hasn't it? It does. It. I but love music, it. Musically, I. I yeah. Do no. Do hear... explain because I there is there's a level of sorcery. You know, there's lots of things in in life where you're like, I don't think I could ever understand the complexity of this. And Matt playing this piano music on the guitar is one that I. It falls under that category. This is this is pure sorcery and wizardry. It's funny actually. How because, did you do it? Because he's well, he's got these. Uh, Any guitarist. He's watching. taken this sparseness, which we associate with the stereotype of, uh, I would say, East Asian, Southeast Asian music, particularly. Um, as you know, all you Leonard folks, a lot of music outside of the European tradition does not include the concept of what we describe of as as like harmony, like J.S. Bach style. Uh, you know, um, blocks of notes changing at the same time to make chords. Like but it, it more commonly uses... Um, like the concept of like drones and or one bass note or bass line with melodies above it. And I think How he's going these on for that. that. I don't know. How I think you this is what it. he's going for this. If you look, we've got. See, I can see playing that on that, but then that adding all these sounds... weird chords against that and keeping that going, that I can't understand how you do it. Like already there, he's gone for a an unusual sound. I mean, it, 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 it's notes derived from the white notes of the piano, but where they're lying and their relationship to each other sounds like music to me from like a metallophone or some sort of um, folk instrument from East or South East Asia. So we got this as the main thing, but then he puts this sort of, I just call perfect fifths, which we get a lot of folk music. But then he puts well. against that, puts something like you might get in uh, some other art music from the period. I would probably even say things like Stravinsky, you know. So yes. you've got you've got this you hear, yeah. diatonic thing going on. But now we get one note outside of that scale. Some people have described as bitonal. I don't think it is. It's, he's just he's just playing around, but he's taking the idea of these fifths in the bass. This very, I used it on another episode. I'm not going to say it, but it, a very folkloric way to play bass notes, and it's to do again with the human ear 
and singing in caves and overtones. Any brass players will know it's called the harmonic series. This is the fundamental, this is the first harmonic, this is the second harmonic, this is the third harmonic. And up it goes, till it does the whole scale. So it sounds nice to our ear to hear, doesn't it? You hear it in throat singing, you hear it in group singing, because it's, it's, it's in nature. It's in a piece of tubing. That's what's made. That was, so, a, that was the first piano, pe piano piece I ever <laughs> performed and was taught when I was a kid. It was called, well, I won't say what it's called because it's not an appropriate word now, but it, it involves a like fifth that. in the left hand and the same fifth in the right hand going up and down. And just like, what well, kid wouldn't like that? Because it's, it's literally in nature. It's in like, yeah. it's, it's in hitting a... Uh, hitting a rock it has those overtones if you look at them on the computer they are there um, and it's in hitting a drum skin it's in a bamboo nose flute it's there that's how you play a bamboo nose float higher up on the my next nickel octave. nose flute does a lot more because you because you hit different overtones so he's taking those fifths like I said boom 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 but moving them around check me out boom 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 Maybe that's a scale. I don't know a lot about Asian music. Maybe that is a specific. It sounds a bit like. I said it sounds about Japanese because I believe that is a scale used in Japanese for music. Could be that Consul Lambert didn't know the difference. Right? That sounds quite Japanese. It really does. So, or maybe he's using a scale derived from that, but. You know, that's why it sounds like that. And that's why it's come to this sort of... I'll tell you who else did that. Uh, Schoenberg. He took the 12 tone, but made uh, like all the semitones that we hear in Western music. I don't know why I played it in one string. But, uh, but then he made, made harmony out of it. So it sounded more consonant. And that's a typical Schoenberg, way we do it. consonant. I don't know. Not the yeah, stuff I've heard. Of. Da, da. See if you did it at Schoenberg version, it'd be something like da 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 um do da da something like that. It's... I like this one better. Um I really like the way it sits on the voice as well. I've always loved it. Where the heck would I ever get to do it? It's true. So but then we get these perfect. Eric Sarty bits, which I, I struggled to play on I the like guitar. I like it on the guitar. I do like so it on the guitar. <laughs> Diminish major seven, yeah. we get that in Revel and Sartre. Yeah, that looks easy to play. And no then problem. Um, this this ending bell bit, I, that really yeah. struck me quite this nicely. This hour, it? and then it chimes You got three. this sort of sound. Which is like Satie to me. This mine, this minory nine thing, which is, you know, and this, uh, what do you call this harmony? Uh, dominant ninth out of the Impressionists. Yes, it, could, yeah. it was all Impressionist at the end. He just said, well, this is what I hear, he said. Yeah, no. Well, I said, I hear or what I've seen on the scores. And... Suddenly we go from that, we go from this, um, whatever the scale is. Down to this. Yeah, so he's, he, but, but then, song, but that's what he's trying to say with our heart, how my heart aches tonight. That's more, he obviously chose the impressionist sound was more of the heart aching, right? Yes. In his yes. musical in language. In his musical language. He's bringing a bit of himself in there because he was aching for Anna Mae Wong in 1926. It's a really interesting song. Um, and I, yeah, like and I say, that's... thank you, Suzanne. You said to choose something that, you know, you're surprised people haven't asked for. Well, I didn't go for that because I'm surprised they haven't asked for my heart will go on, for example. Oh my God, but, don't say that. But, but, or that you want to do yourself. And I'm going, I'll take the second. Um, <laughs> so I've always wanted well, to Well, I had do... a jasmine green tea with lemon and ginger, which there allowed me go. to play that uh, piece of Orientalist no. uh, British art no. music. No, any well. guitarists, it'll be easy to play. Constant Lambert lines if you drink tea. So thanks, <laughs> thanks so much. If you go to patriciahammond.com forward slash request. So I'll click the link in the description. You can actually see a list of all of the songs that we've done in this series. Stravinsky, no Schoenberg, but Stravinsky. Oh, Stravinsky yeah, being done, done. Including um, this kind of period and this kind of harmony. Sati? I don't think we've done any Sati. Yes, in fact, yes, all Stravinsky Russian songs are very much like I this. I think, have we done any Sati? No, we haven't. 
<laughs> oh, there's definitely Satie songs to do. Yeah, there is. There are. Somebody request an Eric Satie song, yeah, and then um, or we've or not request. or just just, me- watch. just metal and indie music, like and and whatever, and we do that, um, and then you can request that. Uh, by clicking on the link that takes you to PayPal you to do so. If you uh, want. It's been a very long video. It has. He said, let's, let's talk about He said music. before, he said, he said, let's make this 10 minutes and no, no more. Don't yeah, know what we're well, at on People now. won't be watching now. No, they won't. But if you are, hello. Special for you. Go to Patricia Hammond Songs on Instagram oh, and yeah. Patricia Hammond on Patreon where you can support other work and get other Bonus bits of content. notice noticed uh, other bits of um yeah content unshared basically. yeah things that other people don't see and it'll also allow us to make some more uh adventurous videos which you'll see coming and articles up. too you get articles right anyway see you later thank Thanks you for watching. maybe see really you later fun. if you want bye bye <laughs>